Today, we're going to take a deep dive into why it's so important when you get your diagnosis for slap tear to have the right people around you, the right network, the right experts. This had a profound impact on my journey through slap tear rehab, and I'm going to share some anecdotal experiences, and I'm going to get my good friend, Phil White, expert physical therapist, to join me and talk to me about why, from a professional standpoint, this is also really, really critical. Welcome to the Unity Gym podcast brought to you by VPA Australia, our trusted supplement source since day one. As VPA sponsored athletes, we're excited to offer you a special 10% discount on their premium supplements available worldwide. Just use our discount code listed in the episode description. Today's episode is also sponsored by the Slap Tear Rehab Blueprint. If you're overwhelmed by rehab tips on social media, our blueprint provides clear results-based methods to help you return to your favorite activities faster and stronger than surgery can get you there. Best of all, it's free. Grab it through the link in our description. If you'd like a personalized slap tear rehab program tailored to your needs and goals and support every step of the way via online one-on-one -on -one coaching, check out my slap tear rehab program. To get started, click the link in the description, create an account, complete a short pre-exercise questionnaire, and I'll welcome you on the inside. And remember, as Amazon affiliates, you can get all the equipment used in our videos and podcasts at competitive prices through our affiliate links in the description. Now let's dive into today's episode. Phil, back again. Same t-shirts. Mustn't have been a, uh, a long time between episodes. <laughs> yeah, although I am working from home now, I still do have a, a uniform. I basically only ever wear black t-shirts. So it could be any day. But yeah, it's the same there, day. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's right. And that's the I, magical. Uh, the magic room. of work, yeah. working at home. Yeah. I, I'm really actually, this is, I'm, I'm quite excited about today's episode because this, this really had a big impact on me and it, 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 it you know, we were very fortunate for, for a number of reasons, but my first experience with a slap tear, it was, it was not luck. It was created. And, you know, it started effectively with me hurting my shoulder. Uh, I, I don't really want to go into detail about how, because I thought I was a break dancer, but I was, I, I found out I wasn't. I did some acrobatics, landed poorly and hurt my shoulder. There was alcohol involved as there usually is when you do dumb things. And I had a friend of mine who I was doing some training with, who is a PhD in sports exercise science, Dr. Tony Bataji, who I was very lucky to be able to sit with him. And he did my initial physical diagnosis, had a look at it and concluded that there was something, you know, pretty badly wrong. He sent me off to a, a sports doctor in the area who was, you know, had a good, good track record. She had good connections. And he also was in a position to be able to recommend me his ideal surgeon. If he said, if you're going to go down the path of surgery, this is the guy I would choose. Now, when I went to the sports doctor to get the referral to the surgeon, it, it, you know, she made it very clear that this guy generally was reserved for professional athletes. Uh, he cost a lot more money and he was pretty, you know, his time was reserved for people who could pay him. And that was generally elite level athletes. So, but I made a big song and dance about it. I wanted to get in with this guy. I was able to get a initial consultation, but it was for six weeks away. At the time, I actually couldn't move my shoulder. I couldn't function. I was training as a boxer and I was also a personal trainer. This is in 2006. And so she said, look, I would recommend that you go and see a couple of other surgeons first and, and just get their opinion because you don't want to have to wait all this time. And so I booked in with the guy I wanted, the expert that I wanted who I'd been told was the best. And, and it was quite funny, the conversation, you know, the difference between having a surgeon who's done the surgery a few times to having done it a thousand times can be quite profound. And so I was recommended to go with the person who'd done it a thousand times, irrespective of whether it would cost a lot more money. Uh, now, I saw I ended up seeing three surgeons, orthopedic surgeons. All three of them said I needed a shoulder reconstruction. There was no way that my shoulder was ever going to function properly again, given that I was a boxer and relied on my shoulder functioning properly and a personal trainer, that it would be silly not to book in and get the surgery. One of them seeing could... three is just wild to me. Like <laughs> the fact I know. that you well, saw that point, many people like, yeah. The the point was that I just didn't want to I didn't want surgery. I, I was yeah. terrified. I was terrified of going under the knife and I had a mother who had had bad experiences in the past and she was in my ear going, you don't want to go under the knife. It's irreversible. You want to try to avoid it. Da, 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 da. And so, yeah, you know, the first guy wanted to book me in that week. He had space. The second guy could book me in in two weeks. And the third guy, something around the same. Fortunately, I stuck with it. 
I, I waited the six weeks and then finally got to see the guy that I really wanted to see. And, you know, by that time I was really down emotionally. I was down, you know, when you get told that you need surgery, it's quite scary. It's quite, it's an emotional beatdown, you know, psychologically. And I relied so heavily on my body functioning at a high level. And at that stage, the only really bad injury I'd ever had was with my lower back falling from a horse. And that happened when I was quite young and I was well and truly over that injury. And, yeah, I just never thought that I'd be staring down the barrel of this. I was a very fit, active person. So surprisingly, when I saw the fourth surgeon, he had a completely different outlook. And he said, look, you're a very fit, strong person. He he looked at my history. He paid a lot more attention to what I was doing, what I was capable of prior to injuring my shoulder. And he said, I think we should try rehabilitation exercise first with a good phys physical therapist, physiotherapist, if you're in Australia. And he introduced me to a, uh, someone who now I call a friend who... I just want to uh, stop you on that because it's physiotherapist everywhere in the world except for the US. So just, you know. Okay, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Physiotherapist or physical therapist. Leroy Lobo, who is a, a good friend of ours now. And, you know, he said, look, let's try this for 90 days. So, you know, 12 weeks or whatever. And, and then we, we'll come back and I'll, I'll book you in. So I'll have space for you. I'll reserve space and time for you. But I want to see how you, how you respond to a good dose of rehabilitation exercise under the guidance of an expert who I trust. I know, like, and trust. I'd never met the physio before. I went to see him in one treatment, in one session, and I'm not promising this is going to be the outcome for everybody. It was quite profound for me, but he, you know, I couldn't actually elevate my shoulder. Every time I tried to what we call abduct the shoulder, it just would sort of hitch up and, and get really painful and it was just not functioning properly. And yeah, he got me to be able to move my shoulder quite well. And of course that really filled me with confidence that had quite a profound impact on my, you know, my positivity, my mindset, all of that. And he said, no, I think, I think we're good to go. You know, he gave me some exercises to do at the gym that I was working at. And, and then I went and saw him every two weeks for a little while. And he would just sort of give me a little bit of guidance and, 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 and a couple of new exercises or tell me to continue on the path that I was going down. And, you know, there wasn't anything I think magic about what he did. Uh, it, but one of the really, really important things that I now look back on and, and, and realize that this really made my recovery. And I think that this is why having the right people around you either makes or breaks your recovery. He was never negative about it. He was never, oh yeah, this is a really bad injury. He never said anything like that. He was very matter of fact. And he was like, yeah, look, you know, you've torn this and you've done that and it's going to be like this. And it's actually probably never going to be the way it was prior to the injury again, but that doesn't matter. You'll be, you'll be fine. You've got a lot of muscle there. You've got a lot of muscle systems there that are going to do the job of what that cartilage labrum was doing before. If we, if we train it properly, I think you'll, you know, you, you, you'll progress and never need surgery, you know? And he was yeah, right. That, when he said that he, did, he didn't do anything magic, like I, this is a great, like one of the coincidences in our lives where I also knew Leroy. And then when we connected, it was one of the things that really, I think brought us together was uh, this shared appreciation for Leroy. Cause yeah, he was the person who made me want to become a physio quite honestly. Cause I saw him when I was uh, 16 and I was like, cool, this is like, <laughs> this is different. This is what I want to do. Like, this is amazing. And yeah, I think it, as you said, it is his ability to communicate in a way that puts you at ease. It makes you feel confident both in him and in like your body and what it can do. And, and I think like, again, in the previous episodes, we've talked about this idea of like a therapeutic alliance. Like there was like, I've never experienced anything quite like it working with Leroy as a patient where you just feel like you've got this person who has just got you covered. And, and that's definitely like, there's, as you said, it's like, it's such a powerful thing to have. And when we talk about pain science in the uh, future episodes, like this is a big part of it is that, that confidence in that you're doing the right thing. Yeah, it, it, it profoundly changed how I approach my own clients as a personal trainer, you know, because just that confidence in the way that you speak to people when they think that all is lost, you know, and, you know, funnily enough, I became the go-to injury rehab specialist at my gym after this. And, you know, people used to say, how do you get such good results? And it would be for any injury at all. And part of it was just the way I spoke to my clients. I filled them with confidence as opposed to beating them down with negativity and the possibility of something, you know, not, I read an article the other day about the fact that 90% of our worries that we fixate on never transpire. 
You know, we sit there worrying about things constantly and it can be anything in life, not re just related to your slap tear injury or your shoulder injury. But these things that we what we spend the majority of our time worrying about or concerning ourselves with never actually come to fruition. They never transpire. And, we, and, and you know, this is something that I, I realized now. And then it went further because I got, I got, I, we were blessed. Rad and I were blessed with having you open a clinic in the gym. And then we had Nalesh come through and work with you. And you guys teamed up for a while. And, you know, we just ended up surrounding ourselves with this incredibly positive network of professionals and experts in the field of physiotherapy and strength and conditioning, you know, having bass in there and, and, and people like that that, you know, it was hard not to be positive when you walked into work, you know, no matter what injury you had. And when Rad ended up doing his slap tear, uh, he, I think he did his right shoulder first, then his left shoulder doing calisthenics. Yeah, he was immediately able to lean on the relationships we had with you guys. And there was just never a, oh, yeah, you're, you know, you're effed, you know, your your, your life is over. Oh, it's never going to be the same. And, and Leroy actually, you know, did at many stages say, Look, you know, and, and there was years that I went back many, many years later, I had challenges with the shoulder again. I mentioned it in a previous episode. I had a motorcycle accident and I actually got high sided, which means that you get flicked over the handlebars and uh, I hit the road at about 60 kilometers an hour, which is enough to really hurt. Um, I had, luckily I was wearing proper gear. So I had, uh, I had Kevlar everywhere. I, I actually had titanium shoulder plates in my Dionysia leathers and I I hit that shoulder and it the the impact of my head and my shoulder getting separated because I landed right there on the road caused a bit of nerve damage in the shoulder and it actually caused enough nerve damage that there is a restriction in what communicates between the brain and that shoulder and you can see it now over the years my left arm is about six or seven hundred grams lighter than my right by DEXA scan. There's just less muscle there. It's harder to stimulate the muscles on, on in the left arm. It's not impossible, but it, no matter what I do, it just doesn't get as much stimulus with my with my bodybuilding, with my weightlifting. And but it, but surprisingly enough, there's not a, a marked difference when I do a bench press or a chin up. It's not like the left side fails first or anything like that it, it, because I've learned to train it properly and I've had the right guidance. I've had the right coaches. I've had the right experts in my corner helping me, you know, and it all started with this avoidance of going and getting surgery. Now, I don't know, of course, what the outcome could have been, but what I can tell you is I've had reconstructive surgery on two joints, one on my right ankle and one on my right knee. And both with the best orthopedic surgeon who does knees and who does ankles. I made sure of that. Now, the right knee was from a soccer injury, a, a football injury. I got tackled from the side and my knee dislocated. And the other one was from a mountain bike riding accident where I cut through the anterior tibialis. I went over the handlebars again, <laughs> mucking around, pushing, pushing myself to the limit. And I kicked the, the chain cog on the way through, which just absolutely sliced through the the the... the flesh, everything right down to the bone on the front of my shin and almost sort of degloved my shin. It was pretty, pretty, pretty hectic. Anyway, enough of the graphics. What I can tell you is that surgery, although it's amazing and, and, and we are so blessed to have these people in I available to us when we need them, but it's not always a guaranteed fix. You know, the knee reconstruction, although it's successful, it's been problematic ever since, you know, and I just think it's important for people to understand that surgery is not just this, you know, I'm going to go get, I'm going to opt for surgery because that's just going to fix the problem. The, the problem, you'll be, you'll be put into a situation where you're given the tools required to make a good recovery. But then it's what you do after the surgery that's going to have the most profound effect on whether it is actually successful or not. And of course, and I'm referring to, and before, and, yeah. and of course, I'm referring to the exercise you do to reconstruct and rehabilitate the area, you know, because the surgery just sort of sets you up for the possibility of a good recovery. It doesn't just fix everything, you know, and I think people get that really, really wrong. And I think that's, you know, that's something that it's, it's really important to understand, you know. So I guess what we're saying here is you may as well start exercising and you may as well start building your team, your network of experts around you that you can lean on that are going to pick you up. Phil, what do you think? Yeah, I think that like when going back to, I guess, the importance of having that team and, and the effect it can have is, is like, I guess you like the big thing you talk about there is the confidence that you 
got about that, you know, everything will be okay. And we've talked about the injury identity before, and we'll talk about it more in the pain science episode as well. But there's nothing quite like working with people who... In the next who, episode, we're going yeah, there. Yeah, we're doing <laughs> it. But yeah, there's nothing quite like working with people who have experienced what you've experienced and, you know, whether that's them personally. So I guess, you know, with all, like you, Rad, myself, we've all had slap tears and we've, you know experience what it's like to be in that pain, to have that psychological challenge of, of this injury that you think could really limit what you do in your life and then be able to come through it. But then also, you know, you guys have worked with, God, I don't know how many of you, what percentage of your uh, clients are people with slap tears, but also, yeah, myself as a physio, like I've seen so many people like with it and I've seen the great outcomes that they can have from it. I, I and also like with- quickly, quickly say, yeah. sorry to dive in. Uh, I, 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 off, off camera prior to this, I had a chat with Rad and, and part of what we're doing and working on right now required him to go back through the last two months of our Google reviews just to, to, to sort of pull anecdotal experiences from clients of ours. And he was able to dig up just in the first month, six people who have shared their story. And the reason why he chose this six is because they all specifically refer to the fact that in tw in less than 28 days, they had a better result with the exercise than they had the prior two years working with doctors and whatever else. And, you know, there's nothing really profound about what we do. It's it's more about the positivity. It's what we're talking about right here. Sorry, I interrupted you, Phil. No, that's fine. Yeah. But seeing that confidence of, I guess, people who experience themselves, but then also seeing lots of people who've had it before and seeing the outcomes they can have. And, you know, with Leroy and Nilesh, you briefly mentioned before, like, you know, they both worked in professional sports in at the Giants AFL club. Like Leroy was head physio there. Nilesh was there for many years. I worked there in a slightly different capacity as well. But like when you're seeing these guys go through just, you know, like AFL is a brutal sport. If you're not Australian or you haven't seen the sport before, I should I would recommend jumping on and having a look at some of the highlights on, on YouTube of, of AFL speckies or marks. Um, but they do crazy things to their body and, and just – when you see like hundreds and <laughs> of players over the years go through these these serious injuries and then like the level of function and, and ability they're able to get back to after that, I think it like just gives you that confidence of, you know, you, like for that, you know, that people do get past this and, and do really well. And obviously like professional sports is not the greatest example because they often, you know, do come back probably quicker than ideal and they do put themselves like in dangerous sort of situations. So, and they can have long-term issues if they really over, over push it. But the idea there basically being like, you know, these injuries are bad, but you can also like, like people do rehab and they do get back to really high levels of function. And if you're someone who isn't, you know, putting yourself at risk, like a professional sports athlete and you're able to take your time and, and go through the exercise in a really safe and simple way, then yeah, you can have some really good outcomes. So I think like the power in working with people like that, but then also, you know, being in a, in a program like the UMS where yeah, I think it does attract people who have had challenges with injuries in the past. And, and, you know, that, that sort of quote of like, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I think that's one of the really powerful things. And what I love about working online and having these like online communities is it connects you with other people who have really direct experiences that you can relate to so much. And when you spend time and like spent, like you're in that kind of ecosystem and you're seeing like all these other people who are facing the same challenges as you and they're like, you know, whether they're a few steps ahead of you or way ahead of you, or maybe they're a few steps behind you and you can support them. Like it creates this really powerful like subconscious, like cause with confidence, obviously there's like the logical, rational confidence that you get from <laughs> knowing things. But when like there's, we're such social creatures who take in so much of like our social surroundings and it's like, you can't understate the, like the power of spending time with people who are on that same journey with you and both like them encouraging you, you seeing what they're doing and you helping like people who are a few steps behind. I think it's just such a powerful and amazing thing that then plays into, I guess, your ability to be confident that you're doing the right thing and that you're going to be okay. And again, next episode, we're going to talk a lot about pain science and how that has a very direct impact on your pain experience. But yeah, with this idea of an injury identity, if you're got 10 other people in this program who you're interacting with, you're seeing them doing their lifts and they've got exactly the same thing as you. And it's pretty hard to be like, but I'm different. Like it's, it's, it, it just, yeah, brings you along on that journey and, and gives you that confidence, which is yeah, huge. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I guess what we want to leave you guys on today is if you are dealing with a slap tear, if you've been diagnosed, you know, start to think about who you're going to surround yourself with because they are going to play a major role in your recovery. If you're getting fed negativity, if you've got people in your ear, if the only person you've gone to see is a doctor and then they've sent you off to get a scan and then confirm that you've got this thing that's now broken, it's, you know, something that wasn't there before, and then you've been sent to a surgeon and they've said you absolutely need surgery to fix this, you're going to be feeling pretty beat up by now, you know, and there are a lot of people in that category, in that cohort, 
And, you know, what I can tell you is that, you know, most of the time it is better to to explore rehab exercise prior to getting surgery. Even if that's something that you've completely decided on, you should be doing this now. You should be setting this in motion now because the recovery post-surgery is more successful when you've exercised prior to surgery. There's a lot of research that indicates that that's the case. And post-surgery, after you've gone under the knife, you're going to rely on the rehab that you're doing there. So you're better off getting that habit going now and you're better off starting to surround yourself with those experts who can guide that process. You're going to get exercises that are specific to what your surgeon requires you to do, but then you're also going to need to take it further than that. You, you, you know, And there are there's so much that you can be doing in preparation for that. So irrespective of the path you choose, whether it is to go down the surgical intervention path or whether it is just to take a, a, a bit of time to explore rehab exercises first, you know, I, I really would urge you to start building that network around you. We're always here to support you. You can throw comments in for the podcast, subscribe to the channel. There are ways you can connect with us. We have Facebook groups and, and of course, our online coaching, our Slap Tear Rehab program. And, yeah, and send, um, a, send a direct message to me or for, to, you know, Tiani about if you have any specific questions, we can point you in that direction. Yeah, and absolutely. Then, I, yeah. I, I forgot to do that in the last episode. We should put your your details yeah, up my, Phil, and yeah my social handles there on on screen the phil white at phil white physio but otherwise my website is dot phil white dot me so yeah and just a, a quick actionable thing to take away about like how do you actually build this like i guess therapy clients how do you work with like the rights of professionals i've talked about this before but like my guide my guidance on how to find the right person is have they had the same thing as you ideally because then they're really going to understand what you're going through <laughs> have they like do they do similar activities to you so if you're into rock climbing do they also do rock climbing if you're into surfing do they also surf and have they worked with people like that before and so any one of those are going to be better than none of those and if you can get all three of those then you're going to have someone who can like be really you know in the right place to to give you a great level of not only like professional guidance but also like empathy and understanding to yeah help you anyway so those are the big three to look out for i can't believe i didn't actually speak speak about that 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 is so important that what what phil's just said there you know i have a lot of friends who do crossfit and they you know you're gonna it's a it's a very demanding sport and if you want to if you if you're dealing with problems very few physios are going to understand the the rigor and also the passion behind it and the reasons why you do it and and they're going to probably just give you a lot of oh you shouldn't do that whatever da 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 da. there's so many physios that also compete in crossfit you know that you can work with so find a physio that aligns with your sport that understands you and your training history and that also has a thorough understanding of the injury and if possible has dealt with it themselves before it'll, yeah, it'll so make- it's worth having a bit of a look around like google's a wonderful thing look in your local area like ha- and, you know even call around and ask like ask specific things about the people who are you know nearby you but also the great thing about online is that you yes. can work with literally anyone anywhere so it, it's it is one of those things now like you could you don't have to just be like who's on your most local or you know who did your parents go to or whatever like it's you really can find that sort of specific person to you and yeah it's, it's worth like taking that time because it can yep. like it, we don't when you become a physio or when you become a doctor you don't just get like a chip implanted in your brain about like this is how you do physio this is how you do doctor like everyone has their own personal experiences both in like you know i guess like how they like when they went through the medical training or or educational training but also what they've experienced with like the particular types of patient they've seen their professional experience and then their own personal experience so don't just think like i've seen a physio once and it sucked or i've seen a chiro once or i've seen a doctor once and it sucked like everyone has such a different approach because human bodies are wildly complex and there's no <laughs> like there's a lot of variation about how things approach people but also their personal experience is going to be really different so it is worth taking the time to find the right one and also like there's the knowledge side of things and there's also just like the personal connection side of things and as you like mentioned Leroy in the beginning like I've never had an experience with a professional before like that where you almost just like want to make up an injury just to go and hang out like <laughs> there's like you know he's just such a, a good dude who like you you wanted to like engage with what he had to say because like he was such a like someone who filled you with confidence and like filled you with excitement about what you're doing yeah. and I think those like soft skills can't be like understated in how like important that is to kind of keep you engaged in your in your rehab journey absolutely absolutely and hey listen 
I like to give you a little bit of credit where credit's due of all the podcasts you could be listening to, of all the YouTube channels, of all the social media that you could be scrolling through. You chose to be here with us right now, improving yourself, improving your health, and you deserve credit for that. So thank you very much. If you liked the content, please leave us a comment. Let us know. Subscribe to the channel. You can subscribe to the podcast. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow Phil on social media, on Twitter. His handle's in there as well. And yeah, gently press that like button. It helps the algorithm. And we'll see you in the next episode. In the next episode, we're going deep into pain science and injury identity and how that's going to affect your slap tear rehab. So do tune in for this one. It's going to be a very, very profound concept if you haven't heard it before. Take care.